In this tutorial, we're going to cover InDesign CC 2021 Classroom Book Chapter 5, which is all about working with color. Now, without, now that you've made it through Chapter 4, Chapter 5 is going to seem way easier. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's go ahead and make sure we're in our window, Workspace Advanced. Let's go ahead and open our file. So file open. Let's grab our lesson number 5 and our start file. Yes, go ahead and update the links. All right, let's open up the end one because we can see what we're going for. So you can see in the end one, we are going to be looking at adding some color, adding some gradients, learning how to create some color themes, um, playing with strokes, playing with different types of color. So. Let's get started on our start. Let's go file, save as. First initial, last name, underscore in design, classroom notebook, chapter five. Make sure we're in our chest, lesson five folder and save. All right, so there's a lot of different ways we can work with color. And the, the beginning of the chapter really goes into a lot of detail about how to work with printers, um, professional and I think you're not quite ready to deal with that part yet. You're still trying to figure out how to use the software. So we're going to go ahead and jump ahead to page 139 and converting a color mode for swatch. So when you do create things in InDesign or in Photoshop, you can be working with RGB, which is red, green, blue. So you're designing things for screens, or you can be designing for print, which is CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So one works with light, one works with pigment, and they work a little bit differently. So depending on how you're going to produce your end result, you definitely want to check with your printer um, about what their requirements are, get going into it. So let's go ahead, and if you see, uh, we're here, we've got, um, we may or may not have some errors. So we're going to learn how to create some colors. So we're at the bottom of page 139 got a lot of different ways that we can play with. The first thing we're going to do is to create a Pantone swatch. So a Pantone swatch is a Pantone matching system. It's used across the globe to make sure that when I say a certain color of green that everyone get, creates that certain color of green because we know that subjective color is very, very hard to describe. So let's go ahead and go to Window. Let's come down here to Color. Let's go to Swatches. And we're going to be playing with swatches a lot today. Um, let's go ahead and go to our hamburger menu. And we want to create a new color swatch. And the new color swatch that we're going to make, the color mode, instead of CMYK, we want to have Pantone plus solid coated. So depending on what you're printing onto helps determine how a color is going to, how to, how it's going to appear. So we want to go ahead and tell it to put 266. So we want that color of purple and say, OK. And that color now is going to be added to our swatches file. And if we look at our colors in not the list, we'll actually see a little dot by here letting us know that it is a spot color. That little thing right there tells us that this is a spot color. So let's go ahead and do a Control S. So let's create some other color swatches. Let's go to Window and Color and get the one called Color. And we're going to create a few different ones. So let's go ahead to our Fill box. So that's the other one. That's our Stroke. Here's our Fill. All right, so this is, OK. For some reason, it's not switching. All right, now's our Fill. And we want to go to Edit, Deselect All. We don't have anything selected. Let's go ahead and press I on the computer to grab our eyedropper tool. And we're going to go ahead and go in this light yellow part of this flower right in here and pick up that color. And the way it's going to pick up those colors, it's going to say, OK, this is what I see. So to make sure that we're all playing with the same one, let's go ahead and adjust that so the cyan is at 10. I'm going to tap down to magenta 0, to black, to yellow is 40, and black is 0. And then I'm going to go here to the top and say add to swatches. 
So now I've got that light yellow that I've created. I'm just going to go ahead and dock this over here for now so I can get to color later. All right, so at the bottom of my swatches panel, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of my current swatch. So it's going to base it on the one I just made. And let's go ahead and double click it so we can edit it. And we're going to go ahead and change it up a little bit. Let's make it cyan 25, tab magenta 75, tab yellow 0, black 0. So we're making kind of a purple color. And we're going to go ahead and say OK. Oh, let me have you pause just one second. All right, picking back up. Now that we've just added a pink, we're going to go ahead and create another way of making a swatch. We're going to hit Alt or Option when we hit the new swatch op option here. So I'm going to hit Alt and the new swatch right here. And it's going to go ahead and pop that open for me. So this time, let's do a cyan 90, tab magenta 70, tab yellow 30, black is 10. And we're going to say OK to update the color. So now we're going to go ahead and create just another color. So we're going to go new color swatch from the top here. And our color is process, CMYK. This time we have cyan 65, tab magenta 25, tab yellow is 100 and black is 0. And we're going to say OK. And now we've got all these new colors that we've just made for our poster. So it's a lot easier sometimes to create all of your colors and then to apply them to your uh, elements later. So let's actually start to do that. So we can either select text to do it. We can select our stroke or our fill or we can select a swatch. So let's try a few different ways of creating these colors. So let's look at our swatches. Let's go to our view. Screen node is normal. All right, so using our selection tool, let's click anywhere in this large background frame. Let's go ahead and add some color to that. So let's click on the fill box from the swatches here. So we're on the fill. And from fill, let's go ahead and grab that green that starts with a 65. And that's kind of obnoxious. So we're actually going to fix that a little bit. So where it says tint, we're going to take that tint slider down to about 50%. So it's not quite as bright. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and grab our selection tool, click out, and we're going to select these frames with Urban Garden Oasis. Right here, Urban Garden Oasis. And with that fill box still selected, that yellow color, and we're going to choose this light yellow right here. And we're going to select on the Pasteboard, make sure nothing's collected. Now we're going to go ahead and grab that swatches panel. We're going to go to the pink, that C25, and we're actually just going to drag that swatch over to our one that starts with our 75 and bring the color over that way. So there's quite a few different ways we can add color. Let's click on the pasteboard. Let's go ahead to that orchid clinic here at the top. And with that fill box, let's go ahead and change that to the blue that starts with C90. All right, let's click out and do a control S and save what we've got so far. So now we've done quite a few fill colors. Now let's apply some colors to a stroke. So if you notice, we've got this horizontal line here in the middle of the page that looks like it's a fill, but it's really a stroke. So let's go ahead and uh, click the stroke menu on the control panel. So we've got stroke up here and let's go ahead and make it the pink instead. So that's C25. All right. And then with our selection tool, let's grab that one that has the orchid bud here. This is an orchid. Oh, this is an orchid too. Let's grab this one. And let's take that orchid. And instead of the swatch being black, let's go ahead and change it to blue. And... That works for us. Let's click out and say control S and save. So now we're going to go ahead and apply some color to some text. So we've got the words Wednesday, January 8th. So let's go ahead and click that whole box. Let's grab our text tool 
and triple click to select the whole thing. Now let's go ahead and change our to our blue swatch that starts with C90. To go ahead and add that one. Now let's grab our Grow, Maintain, and Rebloom. Let's go ahead and click on the frame that that one's in. So let's click out. Let's click on the frame that Glow, Grow, Maintain, and Rebloom is in. So I'm just going to click on the frame and then do a Select A, Control A. Oh, that didn't do it. Control A. It's going to collect, select all that element. And let's go ahead and make it, we're making it blue too. All right. All right. And then Urban Oasis Gardens. We're going to do that one as well. So triple click there. And we want to make sure we use that Pantone color purple. So let's go ahead and select. Selection tools, select out, make sure nothing's selected, control S and save. So let's go ahead and take a peek at a few more things. If you don't have it open, let's go window and let's go properties so we can see that properties window pop up. And using the type tool, let's click on the one that says $75. So with $75, let's select all. So control A. And then let's go ahead and add a stroke to it. So the stroke is right here, and the stroke is going to be one point. And let's go ahead and make it kind of that blue color on the outside. So now we have a $75 that didn't work, undo. Somehow I made it, made the fill color instead of the stroke color. All right, swatches so scale away. All right, so my fill is going to stay there. My stroke is going to be blue. All right, and let's go ahead and make the fill, let's make it green. Okay, and tab. All right, so now if I click out, I should have a green with a blue outline. It's just a very slight blue outline, and that's okay. All right, so now at this point, you should have blue grow maintain. You should have a blue box around your orchid. You should have a yellow box with urban, a purple box here with a green $75. So let's do a control S and save. So sometimes we want to work with what's called a tint swatch, which is a slightly lighter color of what we have. So sometimes when you're paying for printing, you're only going to pay for one or two colors. So when you're doing that, you've really got to pay attention to how can I make the appearance of multiple colors without having to pay for more ink. And one way to do that is to add um, some of these tint swatches. So let's go to view, fit page and window. And let's center it. Let's grab that selection tool. And let's click the pasteboard, make sure nothing's selected. And let's go grab that pink color swatch. So let's go here, close our properties, go to our swatches. And we have our pink here. And so let's select it. Let's go to the top to our hamburger menu. And we want new tint swatch. So it's going to be a tint. And we want it to be a tint of 65. And say OK. So now I have that pink, but it's at 65%. So let's go ahead and apply that somewhere. Let's grab that box where the $75 is. And let's go ahead and grab that tint and just drag it straight on over. And so now we get a lighter purple. All right, let's do a control S and save. Next thing we're going to do is start working with some gradients. And gradients can be a lot of fun. They're a great way to blend colors to make that appearance of something that's a little bit more, more gentle. So let's go to edit, deselect all, make sure nothing is selected. Let's go to our swatches panel and we wanna create a new gradient swatch. We're gonna call it pink yellow. We do want it to be a linear. And from here, we're gonna do our stop color is going to be our step, the stop color is that first little mark. We're going to go ahead and choose the 
swatches. So we want to go ahead and choose the pink. Nope. Pink that starts with 25. And this one on the side, we're going to go ahead and make it a yellow, one that starts with 10. All right, now we're, as far as location goes, that first location, we want to set it to 5. And a tab. And on the second location, let's go ahead and set it to 70. And a tab. So now we've got... Um, this nice color blend between those two colors and say, okay. And it's going to give us that pink yellow. So let's grab our selection tool and grab that grow, maintain, rebloom. And just from the fill box, hit that pink yellow. Should apply that pink yellow right here. Let's see what's going on. Oh, it's on the stroke instead of the fill. There we go. There we go. So now we've got that pink yellow on the inside and well, technically we have it on stroke as well. So I wonder if we can actually see it if I click out. No, it looks pretty much the same. So you might be thinking, okay, that's great, but I don't really love the way it is. I, I want it to go a different way. So we're gonna go ahead and grab your gradient tool, which is your gradient swatch tool about halfway down your tool panel. And you can drag across and it will redraw. Oh, undo. I'm in the wrong box. I want to make sure I've got this one selected. It will redraw how that radiant how that gradient shows. So if you can do it really tight, it's gonna make it very obvious. You can go way over, make it just very subtle. So it's up to you as to how you want to create this gradient on your grow, maintain, and rebloom. All right, when you've got that done, go ahead and push Control S and save. And we're getting close to being uh, done with this lesson. We're going to do something called create a color group. So we want to go ahead and be on our selection tool. We want to make sure nothing is selected, so let's click out. And we want to create a new color group on the swatches panel menu. So it's going to click our thing here. And we want to do new color group. It's going to say, okay, what do you want to call it? Let's call it the Orchid Clinic Ad. And you will be creating your own color groups when it comes to creating your process, uh, projects um, later on. And we're going to grab that shift from dark green all the way down to that pink yellow and kind of drag it in. I'm try and drag it in. There we go. So now that whole group is all in one place and makes it a lot easier to control and keep track of things. So the last thing we're going to do is play with the color theme. So sometimes you're not quite sure what you want your image, you know, what kind of color scheme you want. So sometimes you can have it pick from an image. So let's go to the tools panel and grab our eyedropper tool. And with our eyedropper, if we click on the corner, we're going to get that color theme tool. So what we're asking it is to create some color themes. So let's go to the orchid bud over here and go anywhere on this one. So it's going to go ahead and give us a different kind of theme. And if I go here, it's going to give me quite a few different choices. I'm going to choose that I like the muted one. And I want to actually save it. So I'm going to do add this theme to swatches, which is this little one right here. And so now I've got that muted theme in addition to my orchid. So it's a very easy way to quickly, easily pull colors and not have to do quite as much looking up or droppering uh, to figure out what you're going to do. For your last step, let's go ahead and do our uh, file and package. Make sure we say package. Yes, it's got to save. Make sure we're in the right lesson. So we're in lesson five and save. And set a folder. I want PKG package. All right. Then I'm going to go out to my lesson five.
can double check it. I should have fonts, I should have links, I should have IDML, INDD, PDF, I'm good to go. Right click, send to compressed file, and that is all that you need to do to complete lesson five for Classroom in a Book in Design Chapter 5. Much easier than Chapter 4, and colors a lot of fun to play with. Can't wait to see what you come up with.